In this video, we will be doing section 1.3, examples part 3. So we're going to continue with example 4 from this section. Now, in this section, uh, we will be using one of the special um, limits. And the one in particular that we'll be using is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equal to 1. So I will try to algebraically manipulate these functions into looking something like this so that I can um, substitute it in, okay? So um, for this first example, I noticed that I have a coefficient down here at the bottom, whereas here I did not have that coefficient down at the bottom. So what I can do is I can use my properties and I can factor out a one half so that I don't have that coefficient in the denominator. Furthermore, I can use my scalar multiple property and take the one half completely out of the limit. And as long as this angle and this denominator are both going to zero, and since x is going to zero, that means this argument or this angle and this denominator are both going to zero, this entire limit will become one. So I end up with one half times one, which is one half. Now you may start, as you start doing some of these problems, notice patterns. However, when you're doing the problems on a test, you have to justify why you have the answer that you have or why you chose the answer that you chose. It is not simply enough just to recognize, oh, I remember every time I did a problem like that, it just ended up being one, two, one over two. If that was a five, the answer was one over five. That does not show me that you understand how to use the special limits. It does not show me that you are capable of algebraically manipulating this properly to end up with this result. Memorizing patterns is not enough in this particular course. At this level, we need to ensure that you are capable of applying theorems, applying logic, and applying um, your strategies, okay? It's not enough to just recognize, oh, when I do this problem, I end up with one half, so my answer is one half, without showing any of the justification on how you got that one half, okay? So a lot of times in these, especially on the test, it's not gonna be enough just to get the right answer. What you're going to need to do is justify how you got to that answer, so that I know that your thought process and your logic is correct. That is what's gonna be hard to determine without anything written down. So when you're taking your test, you do have to write down every single thing that you're thinking, okay? Every single thing, if you factor something out, if you, anything that you do, you have to write it down so that you're communicating to me what is going on, okay? Recognizing patterns is not enough to show me that you understand the processes, the theorems, and the applications, okay? So please keep that in mind. That is one of the biggest complaints I get in this course is that I don't accept correct answers because they didn't do it my way, which is not correct. You people who get one half but have no justification on how they got one half do not receive the full amount of credit as a student who is able to professionally communicate mathematically how they arrived at that conclusion. It's not a matter of what I like versus what I don't like. It's a matter of getting my students into the habit of communicating mathematically. And that is the one of the goals and one of the focuses of this course, okay? Once you leave here, you need to be able to express yourself mathematically on pieces of paper in any other course that you take afterward, okay? The reader needs to be able to understand what you were thinking, okay? I just wanna stress that out here because as we go through the rest of them, you'll start to notice what the answer is gonna be,
but you have to show the justification of how you got that answer, okay? You have to show that algebra manipulation that you're doing. Okay, continuing with example five. So here, as x goes to zero, this angle will go to zero. However, that angle and this denominator do need to be exactly the same as they are in this property. So this, this, and this should all be exactly the same, okay? So here, I can take this expression and I can multiply it by a two over two. What that will do is it will put a two in the front of my sine 2x and it will put a 2 at the bottom with the x. Now these two I need there in order to fit the special limit. This 2 though can come out. So I'm going to have 2, the limit, and then just wait a second. I'm going to do one more thing to make everything exactly the way it should be. Remember, we said the, our, the angle, the denominator, and this all need to be the same. So, is it true that if x is going to zero, 2x is going to zero? It is true. Since x is going to zero, it's the same thing x is going to zero, 2x is going to zero, it's all the same. It's going to be zero, okay? But now this, this, and this are all zero, so then I end up getting one for that special kind of limit. However, I still have this two that will get multiplied by it. So you end up with two as your answer. Now our last example, example six. So we've got a couple of things going on. We have the problem from example four with an extra coefficient and downstairs. That's an issue here, okay? So I could do the same thing as I did before where I factored that out. But I also have the same situation as I did with the example five with that having a three X in the angle. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did for the previous problem. But I'm going to specifically put this three down here with the X and this three over here with the fraction. And then the same thing as before, I wanna take this fraction out to the front and instead of having x going to zero, it would suffice to say three x goes to zero. Because as x goes to zero, so will three x. But I do have that three fourths out in front. So then all of these match, so this will all come out to be one, but I still have that three fourths in the front which means I end up with three-fourths. Now again, I know you see the pattern. There's a three up here, so I have a three up here, and I have a four downstairs, so I have a four downstairs. But you must show how, how does this become this, okay? Don't just recognize the pattern. The pattern helps in checking your answer maybe, or knowing at least what the answer should be, but your work is what I will be grading, okay? I wanna make sure you understand the logic and how to apply this property that's up here, okay? How do you apply that to get to that three-fourths?